Be on your guard. Everything good about you will put you in danger if you don't submit to God for his grace and protection, says the man of God, Apostle Paul M.E. Have you been asking yourself why it seems difficult to keep and maintain every good thing God has blessed you with? Apostle Paul M.E. brings you the answer in this sermon titled, Be on your guard. Watch and be blessed. Christianity is a warfare we all know. The moment you make the decision to follow Jesus, eh, you are in danger. Except you are not following Jesus. Except you are not. Everything good about you will put you in danger. Succeed, you are in problem. People will chew your name in their mouth. They will chew it. Don't succeed. No one will mention your name. Everything good is in danger. Listen to me. Everything that is good, genuinely good, everything that is from God is in danger. If it is not protected. Christianity must be protected. Say Christianity, Christianity. Must, be must be protected. Listen to me because the enemy of Christianity is wicked. Ready to destroy. Ready to steal and ready to what? Kill. If you have such an enemy, will you take your guard or not? I want to hear you must be on your so no true Christian will be like that a genuine Christian must be protected in Job chapter 1 the Bible revealed to us that Job was a genuine Christian and God approved it to Satan have you seen my servant Job as you move around that guy is like this a righteous man these days Job is faithful, Job fear God, Job does not participate in what is bad, Job has taught his family to fear God, Satan says, leave that thing. He fears you because you have protected him. Have you not built a hedge around him? Remove that protection. Let me touch this guy. Watch out. A true Christian must be well. So you can see now, believers being attacked by Satan. Bitterly and messed up. You can hear, hey, Pastor face attack. Pro, 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 so they, they attack. Key pastor. Who is being attacked? A pastor. A Christian. A man of faith. A woman of faith. Two. Attacked by who? Let's find out. Evil spirits. Demons. Satan is spirit. So whatever attack comes from the realm of the spirit. It is of Satan. Don't doubt it. Three witches, they don't query you. You see them at night. Am I talking to you? Three yes, queen of the coast, they don't talk much to you. Sleep for night. You will see the person in your dream. Physically, they will never even accept that they are witches or they are evil people. They will never. Who, who have you seen standing and saying, I'm a courting man? Who have you said, it's a lie majority they don't want people to know but people must still know because they must operate and when you operate it must be seen Satan was the enemy of Job a righteous man, a true Christian who was his enemy? we saw it only one enemy the Bible said love your neighbor as your self so the only enemy Job had was who? Satan even his friends who misbehave against him, he did not say they were his enemy. At the end, God is affecting your friends as misbehave against you. I got a word. I've seen it. God wants his friends. Stop all what you are doing to Job. All what you are talking to Job. Let Job pray for you. Then I will forgive you. They were not his enemies. The only enemy that brought all the trouble in Job's life was who? Satan. Know your enemy. I say know your enemy. 
If you know that Satan and all the spiritual forces of darkness are your enemy, you will know how you need to live. Because I tell you the truth, those enemies are wicked. Satan does not laugh with the Christian. If you mess up, he strikes you. If you give him even a what? Chance. The Bible says, do not give the devil there chance. Like you what? You will use it. Imagine now how we are living. So relaxed. We don't bother. Am I giving Satan a chance or not? Am I giving the devil a chance or not? Because if I claim I am with God, danger. Satan is my enemy. He's watching on me. Trying to see how he can destroy me. Trying to see how he can put me down. Trying to see how he can mess me up. Be on your guard. Write it. Be on your guard. Be on your guard. The Christian life must be guarded. A lot of things are happening to Christians because we have forgotten that we must be on our guard. The Christian life must be guarded. So a lot of things are happening to Christians. We must be on our guard. Less you what you fall. Who will make you fall? Satan. Take heed means what? Be on your guard. Take care. The Christian life is a careful life. If we don't make it careful, we can be wasted. We can incur more harm than good. Whereas we are destined to incur the glory of God. The glory of God means everything will work together. Whether it is bad, no problem. But what we know is that God will make it work together for our world. For our what? Our good. For those who love God, be on your guard. I am talking in this altar where deliverance takes place. It's a strong blessing. It's not a matter of whether you will deliver or not. No. Once you enter here and you came in faith, oh Lord Jesus, you will be delivered. Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. 14. Do everything in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The most effectual way to be on our guard spiritually in the minor matters of life and religion is to be more zealous in the greater. Listen to me. We have a lot of things that we do in life. Most of these things may be as a result of our love. But we must be on our guard. For God is love. And God, the Bible says, God sits out. God sits on his throne. What? What? Out. Protected. That is why Satan has no chance. God is love. Love is God. If you must do everything in love, you may find yourself as a Christian even participating in the minor matters and issues of life. I'm talking to you, Peter. 
Get me clear. For you to go to the market is a minor matter. For you to be part of your community group, like this is your quarter, you are part of the community. For you to even participate is a minor issue of life, minor dealings. For you to do business transaction is a minor dealing of life. Remember, the greater dealing is the end of your life, your salvation and the will of God for you. So, in order for us to be at our guard, spiritually, in the minor issues of life and religion, we must be zealous for the greater. It means that don't go off your guard. To be you are God, it means you are serious. To be off your God means in pity you lost sense. Then something dangerous will happen. It is but true that we must participate in the minor issues of life. Family meeting can be the minor issues of life. But no lost sense in family meeting. Danger happens with you spiritually. Both in life and religion alike. For us, the most effectual way, I repeat again, you quote me, Apostle Paul, the most effectual way to be on our guard spiritually in the mind of Issues, matters, and dealings of life and religion, we must be zealous for the greater things. Today, we are not on our guard because we are not zealous for the greater things. The greater things will minimize them and we are zealous for the minor things. So we don't get any spiritual guard and protection. The minor things take us off and we lose our guard. What do I mean? This is Apostle Paul. I will preach the word of God right now. Are you getting it? I give it in truth, in wisdom, in the power of God. Does not mean you may not find me walking in the quarter with other people. Walking in the quarter with other people is the minor thing. But I will not find myself walking in the quarter with other people all the time. That is why I'm making an error now. You may find me even playing football with the people in the community. Amongst those people, all of them are not like me. Spiritually, I am aware. For these people, I may lose my God because it's dangerous for me. I need to be more zealous in the greater. Then I can show love in the minor things. Do you understand me? Do you know to forgive is love? I said, if somebody does sin, for you to forgive that person, do you know is love? Huh? You know, if you forgive the person, it's love. But if you participate with that person's sin, you know it's danger now. That is what I'm talking about. For you to forgive somebody, you are sharing love. But for you to participate with that person, you are no more sharing love. You may lose your word. God. Okay, get it. Evil communication corrupts what? Does that mean you will not greet your neighbor in your partner who is evil? Does that mean that woman who talks so much in your quarter and you really know this woman is not a nice woman? Does it mean when you get up as a holy woman, you will not greet her? You will greet never good morning, Mama God bless you. That is love. Do everything you want. Love. But if you want to not participate with that evil, watch out. You lost your guard. Something go wrong now. Evil communication now. Things that go wrong. Corrupts all that. 
but the greeting could not do you any harm. It could not do you any harm. I don't know if you're getting me, eh? <laughs> Am I talking to you? <laughs> you greet the woman. Don't she's too bad, behaving funny. One day you cook, God bless you. You send your children with a flask of food, they go and give her. She so says, hey, boy, mama, thank you. That woman will be looking at you and be so surprised. This, this Christian woman, I, we all in our tower, they say, oh, that man, that, that man, I trust you, man. Now he said, they begin to give me job. That is the love of God. But that woman will never see you entering her too much. That's a different thing now. I don't know if you're getting me. That one is a different thing. If you enter that woman too much, it's something else now. The spiritual environment, which is dangerous around that woman, will hit your own protection. It will hit. Be on your guard. I repeat, the effectual way to be on your guard in the minor matters, issues and dealings of life and religion is to be zealous in the word greater. Then you can show love to the word minor. You should know what is greater. Be more zealous for the greater. Show love to the world. My love. Then be more zealous in the world. Greater. You need to be serious with God. If you invite me for a birthday party, I will judge the matter. I will judge the relationship. If it gets to the level that it will not be good if I don't attend. I will attend to show love. But if because of that one, the day party apostle will attend, the day party's invitation start coming up, watch me well, I will not attend the rest. <laughs> I cannot attend the rest, sorry. But I've attended one, I've attended two. <laughs> if I want to be more zealous for that, in the day party, Satan will program me. I'm a man who will not forget. He will program me there. I have to be careful, with my God. What we need to be more zealous of is in what? What does your scripture say? Be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Do everything you love. Satan is there. Be on your guard. To be on your guard. Guard means what? Huh? God means what? Tell us, guardian. God means what? A defensive position. A defensive attitude. A defensive state. Yeah? Take note of the word state. Attitude. Defensive. How is that attitude? Say defensive. I want to ask you, if you put wash night at night in your compound, it's to do what? To defend her, to guard her, to guard, to do what? Defend. If danger wants to penetrate, what would the uh, wash night do? Defend. Not so? Okay, how do you keep a wash night in a defensive state? By giving the wash night a weapon in case of attack. Some are authorized to use guns if they are approved institutions. Some are authorized to use knives, matches. A defensive state or attitude or position that is guard. The act or duty of protecting and defending the state of being protected. So to be on your guard is to be in the state of being what? Protected. Watch out. I will not talk lesser than this. Our mother used the word, I was behind her head. She said, my deliverance, eye opening. Father, 
She said, when something is an eye-opening, you don't need to be what? Told. Did you hear? Did you hear her? Or maybe I did not hear. When something is clear and it makes a difference, you don't need somebody to tell you, you understand it. You need to be on your guard. When you are on your guard, it means a defensive state. Huh? A state of defending, not so. A defensive state. Be on your guard. A defensive what? Attitude. And you know what is an attitude? What you are all the time. Be on your guard. Be strong in the faith. This means Christianity is serious. It is only for the serious minded. Say Christianity. It's only for the serious minded. The religion is for the whole, everybody. Say everybody. Be on your guard. That's the message. Eh? It's God's word for you. Spirit. Say spirit. That's all eh? the message is over. That's what the Holy Ghost has said. Be on your guard. Be strong in the faith. When we say be strong in the faith, don't forget Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 20. You are right. When we say be strong in the faith, we should not forget Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 20. And 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 8 to 11. And James chapter 4, verse 7 to 10. Yes, somebody say, please uh, repeat it. <laughs> One young lady says, please uh, repeat it. <laughs> yes, I'm teacher now, so let me repeat. When we say, be on your guard, we should not forget Ephesians chapter. 6 verse 10 to 20 and 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 to 11 and James chapter 4 verse 7 to 10 and Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 to 12 and verse 17 Be on your guard Hold on to faith Be strong in the faith Be courageous for this is do everything in love. By this we understand that the effectual way to be on our guard in the minor matters, issues and dealings of life and religion alike. We must be zealous for the greater. To be on our guard means to assume and to take a state and attitude and a, po and a position of what? Defending. Be on your guard means defend. We are taking our guard against you. Be sober for your adversary. Moves around. So if the Bible says be on your guard, it's against who? Satan. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober for your adversary moves around to destroy. Be on your guard. Steadfast in the faith. Resist him. What is more than Satan is what guards you. This is a trustworthy saying. What does the Bible say? He who dwells in the sacred place of the of, of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And you will say, 
the Lord is my word. What are you saying? You don't claim that strength if you don't take the word. God, you can claim it. You must abide. Am I talking to you? Okay, Ephesians 6, 10 says what? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? So that you may be able to withstand. Okay, attempt to withstand when you are not strong in the Lord, when you have not taken your guard, when you have not put on the armor, you will receive what? Disgrace. Unexpected result. Is it clear? Yeah. So to fight Satan, you must take your guard. Be on your guard. Because your enemy becomes more angry with you when you disgrace him. When God delivers you from Satan's hand, the source of that will become angry than he was before. What the Lord Jesus said, when a demon is casted out of you, it goes to other places seeking for where to rest and finds none. It returns to where it was casted. To check to see if you can enter back. And when he sees that, that place is kept clean. It is swept. Don't forget. It is swept. Those are the words. And kept clean. See the work of deliverance and healing and blessing. Blessings make us swept and clean. But no maintenance yet. No protection yet. So after God bless you, what are you to do? You need to maintain your word. Bless it. Am I coming to you? Yes. After God heal you, deliver you, what are you to do? Maintain your deliverance. Or else that spirit comes back. And when the sister the house has been kept clean and sweat, it goes. It does not end up like that. It goes and brings more. Why does it bring more? Because this person has a defense. If I don't bring more, he may come and drive me again. So for me not to be driven again, let me enter more than I was before. So your second deliverance will never be the same like the first. If I deliver you once, the next time you deliver you, they have added. I know. The next time you deliver you, they have added. That's why there are people who, when they are to come here, <laughs> I'm ready. I tell the evangelist, I said, you want me to come? When I'm ready for something. <laughs> because the demons are coming what? More loaded. The glory be to God that we are always on our guard. So no visitation will surprise us. <laughs> because why? The anointing we have received. Jesus said what? I have given you power and authority to trample over the devil to overcome his powers and nothing shall the enemies harm you so that authority is final authority say final authority, final authority. say no surprises. no surprises yes and for me not to get surprises i must be on my word God. i want to pray for somebody one day the moment they that i start the next question and the four, trust when I know. When I don't leave church, I know that. When I did this one, I forgot to stand. If I fall, I'm. <laughs> I, so, so people start to change their vision. God, you don't show me. Oh. <laughs> Say, Papa, this will not stand fine. I will not be seated team, I know we don't have a talk. <laughs> Am I saying the truth? <laughs> now, that time you will start telling me this, you will never tell me. I will not be seated, I will not say, you don't say the respect big man, so can't see the no big talk. God, you don't be show me. So that we don't pray, that we don't pray. Tell me now, Abel. So that should not fall. Is it true? Yes. Tell me now. I nah, not fall, you see, from my diocese, that they talk rubbish. We all my good out. I will jump on my way, come for that, and say, so, ooh, slap. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me now. That is why the Bible says, open review. It's very, don't, when you are not talking to me, you are pretending you love me. That's sacred love. When you open rebuke is the real love. You don't want danger to happen to me. That's why I'm also preaching like this. Are you getting me? It's real love. I'm not pretending. I don't want danger to work. The Bible says love does no harm to another. 
love does no harm to another. That's what the Bible says. So rebuke is not harm. Say rebuke is not harm. Say neighbor, if you refuse rebuke, the book of Proverbs says you are a scorner. So when you go back, go and write the word, open your Bible, Proverbs, scorner. You see scriptures like this, it will tell you who is a scorner. A scorner is a person who, if you teach, the person will instead insult you. If you correct, the person will make enemy with you. Do you know that people like that? Don't tell them the truth, you and the long road. That's a scorner. Open Proverbs, you will see. So a person who takes rebuke for harm is a scorner. And such people don't waste your time with them. Because they may drain you seriously. They will keep on dealing with you, bullying and you leave them. <laughs> Just pray for the letter. Like be on your guard. Tell your neighbor, say, be on your guard. Be on your guard. Say Christianity. Has protection. has protection. Without God's protection, Without God's protection. It, is it is dangerous. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To show you that without God's protection it is dangerous, that is why even we men of God are delivered. Yeah? Anointed men and women, prophets, apostles, whatever like God has said, can be delivered. Satan is so poison. Satan is so poison. That's why you discover that many things you are facing, you seem not to know, but during deliverance, there are confessions you hear in Russia. Is it true? When you hear what Satan has been doing, you are surprised. Satan is so poison. He will want to harm you, he will not want you to know. He will not want you to, to know. Be on your guard. And yet is the secret. I have simplified for you. God is not saying you should not be in the minor of life. Be in both the major and minor. Because you being in the minor can be God's way of using you as a channel to extend love to someone. Am I talking to you? But what did Jesus say? I said as what? Sheep in the midst of what? Clear. It's very clear. So watch out. Be on your guard. You need to know you are sheep. You are not wolf. When you are in the midst of wolf, you need to be careful. You are what? Sheep. You are not wolf. God bless you. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and share. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and rate us on our various social media pages. You can join us on Facebook at Paul M. E. Ministries to like, follow, and share our posts. And also on YouTube at Paul M. E. Ministries to like and subscribe to our channel. Then click the bell to receive notifications. Please follow us on our Instagram page at Paul M. E. Ministries to like, share and comment on our posts. You can connect with us on WhatsApp through plus 237-6733-10380 and send in videos of your testimonies and your prayer requests. For prayers, counseling, inquiries and testimonies, please call plus 237-670-145070 or plus 237-670-145080. GNCM Live in Christ Jesus.